by talking about physics, and I'm going to end uh, talking about democracy, and I'm not sure where we'll end up in the middle there, but hopefully it will be productive. This Earth has one energy input. It is the sun. And what we know, uh, what Paul Hawken describes in his book, Ecology of Commerce, is that we are currently using up 10,000 days worth of energy every single day. And he wrote that, I think, in, in 1990. So I imagine the situation has gotten somewhat worse. The uh, first two laws of thermodynamics state basically that you can't get something for nothing and that energy can't be created or destroyed. So we have one energy input. That's how much energy we can use every day. And we're using about 10,000 times the amount that we can actually get away with using because what we're actually doing is we're fossil fuels are, are a store, they're a massive store of solar energy over the course of millions of years. That is a, that is a gigantic deficit to be operating at. Um, it's, it's a de deficit of staggering proportions and we in Canada have developed a, a quite a distaste for economic deficits um, to the point where we, we have this religious opposition to them. Um, and yet we have this gigantic energy deficit uh, in, in our very own uh, culture and, and the way we're, we're operating. Um, and it is, it is that sense it becomes a cultural problem because the first two laws of thermodynamics that say you can't get something for nothing and energy can't be created or destroyed, we don't really believe those things in the way we live our lives. We think we can get something for nothing. Um, we think we can generate energy. Uh, and of course, that's, that's not true. What we're doing is we're drawing down on a, on a massive bank account that will not uh, replenish itself in, in our lifetime. The problem as I um, look at it, uh, and, and you won't be surprised that uh, I'm, I'm concerned with uh, the various, uh, I, what, I, what I think is a set of environmental crises that are facing us. Um, I, I've been referring to this recently as the triple E crisis. I believe that our environmental crisis is, in fact, an energy crisis that will become an economic crisis if we don't take the right kind of action. Um, the uh, artificial injection of this huge supply of fossil fuel-based energy, um, which is also, I mean, we tie nuclear to that, right? Nuclear is dependent on fossil fuels in order for the whole, the whole chain to work, that the chain that we've seen from other presenters today. Um, and it is, of course, that the, the fossil fuels, as we've designed our economies and as we've experienced them, have been the source of our economic wealth, have been the source of what we call modern economic growth, all the economic growths that happened in the last 200 years, economists attribute to our exploitation of fossil fuels. So we have a big problem there in the way we've designed our systems. So what I argue is that this needs to be, since we have this triple E crisis, um, that is an environmental crisis, that is an energy crisis, that will become an economic crisis, wouldn't it be great if there was a way we could address them all together? And that's why I think it's very important to look at holistic solutions and to look at the ways that these things relate to each other. And, and one of the most significant things there, I think, is the cost of energy and paying the true cost of energy. And, and that's something that we absolutely need to do because we need to send the right price signals to the market, we need to send the right price signals to the consumers about what the true costs of our activities are. And we've, we've talked a lot about, there's a lot of opposition to nuclear energy in this room, which I think is, is right, uh, correct. Um, and and, and it, it would be difficult to imagine many Ontarians who would want to pay the true cost of nuclear energy. I mean, if you actually factor that in, put that on their hydro bill, do you think anyone would be voting for that? Um, and the same goes for coal. And these are very real economic costs, and I always want to drive home that point as well, because these aren't um, abstract costs. These are costs that we pay for. Um, the cost of climate change is a real economic cost. We know that the Nick Stern report uh, pegged uh, the, the cost of not acting in, in the trillions of dollars, which, is, which are numbers that we, uh, I personally can't even wrap my head around. Um, so that these real economic costs need to be factored into the price of energy. And one of the ways uh, I think you, you can do that is, is through a carbon tax. And that's, that's why I think that's, that's critical. Um, and why I'm, I'm surprised uh, at this point that there's still only the Green Party explicitly advocating for a carbon tax. Um, and I hope that, that uh, we've, we've been encouraging other parties to steal that idea, and I hope they do. Um, because if the prices aren't right, if the market signals aren't being set correctly, then change will not happen. And there needs to be a mix of regulation as well. Um, some things absolutely must be regulated. 
but, uh, but if the market system itself, I mean, we can't go up, but we've created this huge beast in, in what this, this market economy that we've manufactured. Um, and, and we have to use that as a tool. We have to harness the momentum of that because, because if we don't, there's no way we can, we can just go up against it. So that's, that's basically uh, what I wanted to say. And, and when I said I would conclude with democracy, I, I tend to add a, a fourth E. Um, the fourth E is the electorate. Um, and the, the fact is that we are in a democracy and that we will only achieve success if we are all engaged. And, and I've got a problem here because you all are. And that's what's dangerous about an unengaged electorate, is because we can, we can listen to parties make promises, uh, but we really need to look at the details of those commitments and what actually is going to be done and look at the whole package. And so that's why I'm really glad uh, that you're all here today and I'm glad to be here today and, and I would strongly encourage everyone to to become an active participant in democracy because in a democracy we're all politicians and it is 